Welcome to today's webinar in the House and the Senate, a legislative career panel conversation with two alumni legislators, Senator Julia Coleman and Representative Liz Olson. My name is Adam Eust and I serve as the Alumni Advocacy Director at the University of Minnesota Alumni Association. Now I would like to introduce today's moderator, U of M alumnus and past chair of the Alumni Association, Jim Dubois. Jim? Good afternoon, my name is Jim Dubois and I'm excited to be with you today. Before we get started with the presentation, I would like to thank our Alumni Association members and donors for making initiatives like the Alumni Webinar Series possible. If you are interested in learning more about the Alumni Association, please visit us at umnalumni.org forward slash membership. Today's webinar in the House and the Senate is one of the many events we have during Career Month. On screen, you can see other upcoming events that are available to sign up for at umnalumni.org forward slash career month. Career Month is made possible by many great partners that are shown on your screen. Our presenting sponsor, Freedom Financial, is proud to sponsor Career Month because quality education and career development align with their mission to help everyday people move forward toward a better financial future. Their suite of financial solutions has helped hundreds of thousands of consumers take control of their finances, reduce their debts, and get on a path to financial freedom since 2002. The UMAA greatly appreciates all our partners who have made the events this month possible. I would also like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. Questions are welcome, and you can submit them anytime using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. We do have an audio phone option available as well. Dial 646-558-8658, and when prompted, enter the webinar ID, 910-5393-4244. Today's panelists include Representative Liz Olson, who represents the people of District 7B, consisting of West Duluth in the Minnesota House of Representatives. First elected in 2016, her priorities have included expanding affordable, accessible health care for all Minnesotans, improving educational opportunities for learners of all ages and abilities, strengthening economic security, and delivering on local priorities, including infrastructure investments within the city of Duluth and at the city's higher learning institutions. She serves as Deputy House Majority Leader. Representative Olson earned an undergraduate degree in sociology from the University of Minnesota Duluth campus, followed by a master's degree in congregational and community care at Luther Seminary. Outside the legislature, she works as a community advocate with a nonprofit organization. She lives in West Duluth with her husband and daughter. Welcome and thank you, Representative Olson. Senator Julia Coleman is a lifelong Minnesota resident growing up in South Maplewood and graduating from the University of Minnesota in 2014. While at the university, Senator Coleman served as the student body representative to the Board of Regents and as Miss Minneapolis 2014. Her first jobs out of college included working as a political field representative and a political reporter. She has also worked as the public relations manager for the Medical Alley Association and served on the Chanhassen City Council. Senator Coleman resides in Chanhassen with her husband, Jacob, and their son, Adam, and excitedly awaits the arrival of twins this summer. Congratulations and thank you for joining us, Senator Coleman. Let's jump right into today's conversation. First of all, we'll start with Representative Olson. Tell us more about yourself. What is your current role and your relationship to the university? Uh, well, thank you, Jim, and thank you to everybody that's attending here, and it's nice to be with Senator Coleman. We haven't had a chance to meet yet, so it's always fun to get to know each other in these ways, too, outside of just the legislature. So I'm really excited to be here, excited to be meeting with folks uh, attached to the university system. I am a proud UMD graduate, as mentioned, so go Bulldogs. And yeah, so I am in my third term in the legislature, and I am serving as the deputy majority leader as well this year. And so I, um, as mentioned, represent the central and west parts of Duluth and really love my community and see that as 
is really the driving force of why I'm here and the kind of work I do. And the relationship I have with the university system is really one of connectivity that I feel is a big part of you know, my identity as how I got to be where I am, but also a place that I stay in touch with now. It's often we do lots of uh, conversation between the way the university system works, how it impacts Duluth, my role as a legislature. I hear from faculty and staff and students. So I see it as really an integral part of what it means to represent Duluth. Um, I don't technically have the university in my district, but it's a part of our ecosystem and our fabric of Northeast Minnesota and as the state. So it's a big part of how I think about my job and the way I legislate and the kind of issues I work on and try to represent that well here at uh, the Capitol. And so I, that's a big part of it. And you know, I really see my job as to be the voice of the 40,000 people I represent. And a lot of them are tied to the university system, whether they're employed there, whether they're students there, um, whether they rely on the university as for a job that they have in my community. So I see that as a big part of the fabric of, of a Duluthian and being a Duluth representative. So it's, it's exciting to be here and to be able to bring that perspective both as a, as a graduate, but also as someone who's now representing um, the community that has a university institution, UMB. So I'm glad to be here. Senator Coleman, same question for you. Well, thanks, Jim. I'm really excited to be here as well. Uh, I think my bio hit on pretty much everything I don't normally share about myself. Uh, as it mentioned, I used to go to the University of Minnesota up until 2014 when I graduated. And uh, in 2014 also, I was served as Miss Minneapolis. And something I didn't include in my bio is that mental health and suicide prevention was my platform project. And so to this day, that is something that's very near and dear to my heart and one of my passion projects that I'll keep throughout my life. Um, my connection to the University of Minnesota, aside from having gone there, uh, is I have thousands of um, alumni members in my district, thousands of them. And so my district is Carver County. Uh, so we have a lot of fun stuff in our district, but I'm saving that for a, a different question. Um, but I'm really excited to be here and to um, you know, share more about our experiences at the, the legislature. We'll move on to our next question. Senator Coleman, we'll start with you. Tell us more about your career story. How did you first get involved in politics? So it's actually a really funny story to tell. When I started at the university, I was leaning more towards pre-med physiology, I uh, really wanted to help people. And I thought that medicine was just so fascinating and I still do to this day, which is why I loved my several years at the Medical Alley Association. And I had an advisor say, well, if you wanna to go to medical school, you'll need something on your resume that is non-medical related, that really stands out, something that makes you interesting. And I had a friend interning in the governor's office at the time, and I knew nothing about politics. I grew up in a swing voting household. We didn't talk politics. I didn't pay attention to it. I was probably 18 years old at the time and thought, oh, great, this will be something completely new to me. I'll learn more about it. And so interned for a semester there, realized that, you know, I don't quite know if this is where I'm supposed to be, if this is exactly where my, you know, priorities and principles line up with. So the following semester was interning with the Senate Republican Caucus and gave both sides a shot and thought, you know, this is where I belong. This is what I believe in. And what I wanna spend my life doing is promoting these principles that I'm learning here and that I, I feel aligned with my value system. And so I ended up switching my major to political science and making that uh, my life. I never thought I would end up as the candidate. I really liked working on campaigns. I liked working in recruitment, in leadership development. Uh, but when my state senator announced he was retiring and I didn't see anybody stepping up to the plate that I believed in, decided at nine months pregnant that I was going to do it. I was not going to be that mom sitting up in the middle of the night wondering what type of world I was leaving my child. I was gonna roll up my sleeves and do something about it. So I announced I was running and one week later I had my son. And two weeks after that, he was on the campaign trail with me his whole first year of life. And so that's kind of how I have stepped into the state Senate. I'm only four or five weeks in, but it's, uh, I'm learning a lot real fast, that's for sure. Representative Olson, same question for you. 
Yeah, great question. And it's fun to hear Senator Coleman. We have some intersections with our stories about running for office. I also was a young, you know, just had had a child a couple months old when I announced I was running. So we joked her first word was probably delegate <laughs> as we went. So yes, so my story starts a little bit before running. It was actually when I was at the university system that I started to understand um, just when when inequalities that exist and how important it is that to have voices at the Capitol that really reflect, especially those on the margins that may not have a loud voice for them at the Capitol. And I learned that in many ways, you know, at the university system, I, I jokingly tell this sometimes when administration is around, but I helped organize a student walkout in support of striking clerical workers. Um, which is actually how I met my husband, uh, was helping to organize that student walkout. So kind of the activist deep end uh, really was fueled at the UM, at UMD. Um, I've you know, camped down since then, but uh, I also worked at a, after college, I worked at a homeless shelter and food shelf in Duluth Chum. And that was really where I even got more clear on having voices in elected office that really listened to and incorporated their, the perspective of people that are often marginalized. And it was during that time when I was working there that a healthcare program for the poorest and most vulnerable in the state was on the chopping block. And so we actually packed buses of people from Duluth. We had faith leaders, we had uh, people staying in the shelter, we had, you know, families, low income families, and we would get on the bus and we'd go down to the Capitol and we'd meet with elected officials and talk about the impact of this health care program. So that was really when I first understood and saw um, the workings in the Capitol and how state budgets impacted all of our lives in really deep, deep ways. And so I never thought I'd run for office, kind of like Senator Coleman. I was happy doing that kind of work, packing the buses to go down and meet with the legislators. Never thought I would be a legislator myself. Um, but then same kind of thing. Um, the senator or the representative that had my seat ran for a Senate seat, so it opened it up. And I had that kind of same realization that Julia did around, you know, perhaps it's my time um, to give voice to these these folks I've been working with. And so my small child and the blessing of my family, I decided to run and here I am five years later. We'll move on to the next question. We'll start with Representative Olson. And uh, tell us uh, about career advice you would offer to someone who is interested in pursuing a career in politics. So where should people begin? What sort of skills are needed and what kind of internships would you recommend? Yeah, that's a great question. and. For, for me, I really see politics as the means to improving people's lives. And so I think there's different reasons people seek out, you know, politics. Uh, and I see it as, as, as that. And so for that reason, I think it's great when people come from a variety of experiences and a variety of perspectives. It doesn't mean you have to be a poli sci major. It doesn't mean, you know, that that has to have been your background. I think when we bring our lived experiences to the Capitol and we bring diverse voices from diverse communities, that's when we do our best work. And so I encourage folks to think about like what motivates you, you know, why, you know, what role do you want to have in politics? You know, is it elected office? Is it working on campaigns? Is it being a policy wonk? Is it a lobbyist and activist? I think there's a lot of ways that we can actualize what it means to be. Um, but that said, I think, you know, encouraging more folks to run for office that maybe typically don't think about it. Um, and so especially if you're from a community that hasn't seen yourself reflected in leadership, you know, within decision making bodies, I think that's exactly the kind of voices we need at the table. And it's fun to see that really changing with even in the five years I've been in the legislature. Um, it's great to see young moms. It's great to see folks um, from communities, our BIPOC communities, from rural areas, you know, different voices that haven't typically been there. So I think people just getting clear on, you know, what do I bring to the table in the discussion? And is it something that isn't there currently that I can help reflect? Um, that said, I think there's lots of internships, you know, get involved, you know, work on campaigns to get to know that process, volunteer at the Capitol as an intern, there's a great program called Capital Pathways, which really helps bring people in to experience different ways you can intersect with work at the Capitol. Um, I think all of our offices have opportunities for volunteers. 
And I think the university offers a lot of options. I interface a lot with students who are interested in the work we do at the Capitol, you know, from a variety of interviews or projects or volunteer work or classes. And I think that's a great way too to see, or, or the lobby days, put in a plug for all of your lobby days that, that the Alumni Association and others do. I think that's a really powerful way to also get a taste for what's at the Capitol. Senator Coleman, same question for you. Thank you. And I think my answer is, is pretty similar to Representative Olson's. It's definitely don't just rely on your classroom time. You have to be two things, I believe, well-rounded. So maybe a jack of all trades and not necessarily a master of anything. So get some private sector experience. Work a job that is outside of politics. Really get to understand some cer certain subject matter and see what it is about policy that you're interested in, what kind of policy. If you're interested in healthcare, maybe get some work in the healthcare system. If you're interested in early education, get some experience in that. Uh, and also to understand that politics is the business of relationship making. It's really important. And so you can't just come out with a master's in poli sci and expect to be a chief of staff of a congressional member out in DC. You have to put in the grunt work. You have to work on campaigns for no money. You have to intern. You have to be willing to show that you're willing to put in effort for your team, uh, late hours, long hours, and really be willing to be a team player and, and build that resume up, build those relationships. So when a job does open up, you know the person who's applying. They know your work ethic. They know what you're all about. So be well-rounded and, and put in the grunt work, do the, do the work. Just a reminder too, that you can submit questions using the Q&A feature on your screen. We'll move on now to the next question, starting with Senator Coleman. This piggybacks a bit to what we just discussed, but particularly for the students who are watching today, how would you advise them? What kind of courses should they pursue? And uh, would it be advantageous for them to get involved in student government at the U? Yeah, student government is great. You learn a lot of things that might be intimidating to walk into in the legislature. You'll learn, I think, Robert's rules of order. You'll learn things like that. You'll get comfortable with having to vote on things and standing up for what you believe in and why. And it's uh, definitely a different uh, the stakes are a little bit different, but you get comfortable with the jargon, you get comfortable with the process. So I definitely recommend student government. I definitely recommend, as I mentioned earlier, having a well-rounded background. So not being too narrowly focused in your um, area of expertise. You wanna be able to talk a little bit about everything. And then also getting involved in your local party. I think that's really important as well. Now, it might be harder if um, you, know, you are almost a Canadian and you're coming to the U of M Twin Cities, but you can get involved still uh, at the U of M campus, wherever you are, if you don't wanna go back home to get involved in that local party. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to get involved and get comfortable with the world that can be quite intimidating when you're you know, just trying to figure out life itself. So I definitely recommend doing all of that. Representative Olson, same question for you. Yeah, I would, a lot of what Senator Coleman said about just a well-rounded educational experience. And I know, if, you know, in Duluth in particular, the campus there, there's ways to really feel like you can plug into the Duluth community and see the practical application of a lot of what you're doing through um, opportunities off campus too that really make a lot of that come alive. Um, and finding the student groups that really break down kind of, I think that bubble we tend to feel like we live in when we're in the university system. You know, that was really important for me was to connect with like the Women's Resource and Action Center, which then put me in touch with a bunch of, um, you know, feminist type organizations in the community to really understand how they were putting into practice things I was learning in my women's studies classes. Um, so I think it's, you know, finding your interests, your passions and following them and really exploring them in a variety of ways through the opportunities that are offered at the campus that aren't necessarily classroom opportunities, I think is really important and showcasing leadership. You know, I think students in particular are leaders and they're going to force a lot of the cultural change um, within communities, within institutions. And so using it also as a time to kind of test that edge of things you're still learning and doing, but also knowing you're a voice for change as you're going through those things as well. And using it as a time to kind of sharpen and learn how to do that uh, effectively, I think is really important. And uh, Representative Olson, same question for you. 
I think I just answered I'm sorry, it. Representative Olson. <laughs> we'll move on to the next one. Did I was too busy. Up? No, no, no. I, it's a moderator error here. No, I was just looking at the chat section here. Uh, we'll move on to the next question. And Representative Olson, we will start with you. But uh, tell us what your role looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, now that you're at the legislature, how does your work look differently, perhaps compared to what you expected it to look like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and one that is different in a pandemic, if you would have asked me a year ago and you asked me today, um, it, it's interesting, I think, for our new members in the House and Senate this year to come in during campaign during a pandemic, um, got sworn in during a pandemic and are legislating during a pandemic. Uh, it's such an unusual experience, I think, uh, to be in elected office at this time right now. But uh, that said, we are a part-time legislature and we operate you know, roughly through January through May. And during that time, we are largely in St. Paul. Um, we are in committees where you get assigned based on both your interests, availabilities and uh, other factors. And so you sit on maybe five committees on the House side where you hear bills, you spend most of your time in committee hearings and then you also do floor work, which is when bills are ready to get passed off of a body, uh, you do work on the floor. And so those days get long when we get towards the end of the session. Um, and we have two years um, you know, that we do a biennium. And so the first year of our biennium is our budget year. So we're in a budget year. So this year is also the time we're working as House and Senate and with the governor, the executive branch, to pass the state budget. And so there's these days so towards the end, as we get closer to May, that'll be a lot of our focus. Right now, we're laying the groundwork in the committees, uh, you know, hearing budget proposals from organizations, from the executive branch, and we'll start to put that together. So the days are committee work, they're floor work, but the most important work, part we do is really our constituents. And so that is where we squeeze that in every time we can. Um, so it's you're sitting in committee for an hour and a half, and then you're probably doing 15 minute meetings with your constituents whenever you can pop them in. So during session, you know, uh, January through May, the days are, are long um, to fit all of that in. And then, you know, during the interim, most of us work other jobs uh, in order to, we're a part-time legislature. And then we're also meeting with our constituents in districts on weekends and Fridays, and um, then those months were off. So it's kind of a jack of all trades, you know, has spread a little thin during that time, but it's really about reflecting the voice of our constituents in both that committee and um, larger bill process as we go and drafting legislation and working. So that's that's where we are right now, except all of us over Zoom right now. <laughs> so committees, floor sessions, it's pretty remote right now. Senator Coleman, same question for you. I think Representative Olson hit the nail on the head when she said it is weird to come in as a freshman. I don't know life outside of this year right now with everything being distant and virtual. Uh, if I had to pick a year to be really tired and pregnant with twins, this is the year to do it because I'm not running around the Capitol all the time. Um, but kind of my day to day is very similar. I start my day very early. It is very important to me as many days as possible to be home for dinner and bath time and bedtime. It doesn't happen every day, but I make that my priority for my family. So I usually start around 7 a.m. tackling my emails and getting my calendar all set. And then around 8.30, I'll be in committee for a while. And then in between committees, when I'm not trying to quick snack on something as fast as I can, I have those 15 minute meetings she mentioned back to back uh, between constituents and lobbyists. And then I'm back at either the floor session or committee and chasing down bills the rest of the day. So it's a lot of hectic work, but it's a sprint to the finish line pretty much and trying to do the best you can for your constituents with the time that you have. And I'm hoping that at some point I'll get to experience a regular session, um, but we're um, being very productive this way. I, I've been surprised. So I'm gonna be curious to see what life is like after this year as well. And just a reminder too, for our audience, please be sure and submit any questions you might have via the Q&A feature on your screen. Uh, moving on now to the next question, Senator Coleman, we'll start with you. This comes from the audience. What organizations have you found that are working effectively at healing the urban-rural divide in Minnesota? 
Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I think one of the biggest things that people are dealing with that I mentioned before is the mental health. It was a big crisis when everything happened this summer. It was a big crisis when the pandemic hit. And there's always been a, an issue between you know, people in outstate Minnesota not feeling heard or people in the center of Minnesota feeling unheard. And so making sure that people have places to talk to about that and to bring legislators together always seems to be surrounding mental health. We can all get behind that and we can all make sure that people are feeling like they have their voices heard and that they're taken care of. And there's so many great organizations in Minnesota that do that. Um, and then I always think maybe it's, I'm, I'm biased because I'm a suburban legislator, but any organizations dealing with the suburbs that we do connect, you know, rural and urban in Minnesota. And so those are some great organizations as well. Excellent. Representative Olson, same question for you. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think top of mind, and I think there's, you know, the idea that there's an urban rural divide is real. And I think the more we kind of perpetuate it, the worse it gets, right? And so I think there's the reality of the, un the unique needs that are true of every community throughout our state. But what you find it, a lot of times, especially as you sit through committee is the needs aren't all that different. Uh, there's childcare issues, there's mental health issues, there's connectivity to internet issues during Zoom. So it's really like, where are our commonalities and our differences and where do we work together? And we all have a role in working together. I think there, if we wait for a organization or a person, we'll be waiting a long time for that to be the focus where I think we all have a role in, in really healing that, that divide that, that exists. And I, for example, I had a meeting with art organizations from Northeast Minnesota today, and they were talking about the role of the art and how they're really being intentional about bridging some of that divide with how they're, they're thinking about art, um, which I wouldn't have thought that that would have been what our meeting was about today. Um, and so I think there's lots of places we can creatively, creatively, creatively <laughs> think about doing this work in kind of everywhere and noticing our differences, but leaning in on the things that we can work to heal together. And I think that's really the work of our, as legislators in particular, our work is not to feed it, but to really work to figure out how we bring ourselves together. And so I'm hopeful that there's a lot of organizations and a lot of people willing to do that work. We have an audience question too for Representative Olson. Uh, the audience member wants you to explain a little bit more about capital pathways. Oh boy. <laughs> so I know about it because I interface a lot with people in the program who are gaining experiences from, I don't know, I, I would say do a search or you can email me afterwards and I can put you in touch. So I cannot tell you a lot about program specifics, but what I can tell you is it, um, I am in a lot of meetings where it's folks who maybe have an interest in some aspect of what it means to work at the Capitol um, who are gaining experience through like, um, a lobbying organization or through uh, someone's elected office to understand more about what goes on at the Capitol. It's specifically targeted for communities who maybe haven't had a chance um, to have their voices at the Capitol as much. So gaining experiences in like underserved communities to be able to have kind of that in that um, historically maybe their, their community has not had. So I can get you more information on the details, but it's a great program, especially for communities who maybe haven't had that access. We have another question from the audience. Uh, we'll start with Senator Coleman for this one. How have you seen campaigns changing in the last 10 years or so? Well, 10 years ago, I was in high school. So I, it's hard for me to comment on that one. Um, but from my experience shortly, when I campaigned in 2018 for city council versus 2020, uh, for the state Senate, I noticed that it's a lot more of a heated uh, environment in which we are campaigning. Um, that, that much I've noticed and that a lot more went digital and that's probably pushed on by the pandemic 
but I'm not too sure if that's going to change. I think it's going to push a lot of people into a lot more of a digital campaign. Texting was at an all-time high. Digital ad spending was at an all-time high. Uh, so I think we might see some more money getting shifted away from television and, and staying in social media. And hopefully, you know, the rhetoric will, will, will turn down a little bit. But those were the, in my short experience in politics, the two things I noticed between the last two campaigns I've been in. Representative Olson, same question for you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I've personally run for this. I'm on my third term, so we run in every two years. So I've campaigned. This is my third cycle of running a campaign. Um, and I mean, I think what I have learned, you know, the state legislature, I believe we do powerful work. We do good work. Um, and I feel like my constituents want to know about it. And that's why they're voting. But as you're out door knocking or phone calling, you also realize how much the national rhetoric plays into everything. And I hope we can break through the noise. You know, we're the only divided legislature in the country. We do a lot of bipartisan work here. Um, we do, you know, but it just really doesn't seem to cut through sometimes. And I'm feeling, you know, I felt that in particular this last cycle, it, I, I it was really about the national scene and what happens there. And I think that filters down to how we see that div divisiveness in campaigns, I think is really driven by a lot of what's happening at the national level. Um, and so I hope we can stem that tide and change that in terms of the way we campaign. And obviously over 10 years, I think the biggest thing is too is money in politics. Um, seeing how expensive even a legislative race will get now is unbelievable. Um, and so we're seeing just more money in politics too, which I think has a really divisive effect. Moving on to our next question also comes from the audience. We'll start with Representative Olson. How do you balance your life as a seasonal legislator? How do you juggle having another job or personal responsibilities with the session duties? Yeah, that is a great question. So as mentioned, we're a part-time legislator legislature and so most everybody works outside of you know has jobs and they vary i mean some people work full time all year long even when they're in session other people will take leaves of that leaves of absence during the session um, or maybe just work part time and then go back to full time so i think everybody does it a little bit differently but it is really i for me it would be difficult to balance all of that during session and so i completely focused May through June or January through May on the session and uh, pick up more work in the summer to make up for that. And I think everybody does that differently, but it is hard, especially like, uh, so I'm a greater Minnesota legislator, which means uh, we travel to the Capitol and we're here May through or Monday through Thursday, most, uh, you know, normal sessions. And so for a lot of us, that also means we have to balance families. I have five-year-old at home. And so it, it is difficult. And I think that's why sometimes in particular, you don't see a lot of greater Minnesota uh, young parents, parents of young children last as long um, in, in these seats, because it does, it is quite a lot to ask of your family during the week in particular when you're gone. Um, so that therefore me personally, that means when I'm home, I'm home and I'm with my family and present because I need to balance that for then when I have to be away. Um, but it's tough and I think any legislator, you don't talk about it often because we choose to do these jobs and we put the people, our districts first. And um, it's also, it is a balancing act and a lot to consider. Senator Coleman, same question for you. Yeah, you know, I'm still figuring it out. As I mentioned, I'm in my first several weeks, but so far what I've learned is during session, it is really important to set certain boundaries for yourself. You can give this job your whole heart and everything you have, um, but they don't want, your constituents don't want you putting your family on the back burner, which is why for me, it is really important to say, as much as I'd love to go to this event or as much as I'd love to um, you know, go to this extra training, I'm home for dinner and bedtime and bath time. That's, that's my priority. Now, if session goes late or committee goes late, that, that's different. Everyone has to sometimes stay late for their jobs. Um, so setting up boundaries and sometimes having to miss out, but always giving it your full heart and giving when you are in the office, the constituents get as much of you as you can possibly give. Um, I did leave my role at the Medical Alley Association right before I started at the Senate because I knew that I could not 
give to the company the way I wanted to. Um, so I'm actually, I worked in public relations and digital media for them. So I'll be actually this summer launching my own company. And I imagine it'll be much like what Representative Olson mentioned as far as just picking up extra work in those seasons and um, trying to fit in constituent services evenings and weekends um, and outside of session. So that's, I'm really excited to get started on that. I love working in social and digital media, um, but right now my main focus is my, my constituents and, and my family and staying just kind of tunnel vision on that. Moving on now to our next question. We'll start with Senator Coleman. Did you have a mentor and what skills or lessons did you learn from them if so? Yeah, that's a great question. I had a mentor in the sense of an organization that mentored me throughout uh, college and beyond. I still have very close ties to the Miss America organization. What they do for young women across the country is something that I think is so valuable. A lot of people don't believe me, but I am a diehard introvert. I get my energy being at home and the idea of being a candidate, of being on stage, of talking in front of people used to keep me up at night. I used to get sweaty palms and, and Miss America organization really helped mentor that out of me and get me used to talking about people, speaking up for things that I believe in. And so to this day, now I turn around and mentor young women through that program. Um, so I think that organization has done so much for my life and now I'm trying to try to give back a little bit. Representative Olson, same question for you. Yeah, I've had a number of mentors along the way, and um, I don't know if any folks are from Duluth. I think there are a few folks, but Steve O'Neill, who passed away, um, I think about seven years ago now, he was um, worked, you know, for as a homeless service provider and advocate, um, and then ran for office eventually, um, more towards the end of his life, and. Um, he was someone I think that was a great influence to a lot of us about how you channel your passion and love for people and caring and that advocacy part and how it translates into elected office and which was, um, you know, something different for me to learn and something I wasn't anticipating. And so watching someone like that was really important. And then just a lot of mentors from the faith community. When I worked at the homeless shelter, we were supported by 40 different congregations and I come from a faith background about just the authenticity of wherever you are, you're your authentic self and also the ability to be really present um, with the people you're serving and the people you know most impacted by the issues you work on, I think was something that a number of faith leaders have really shown me. Um, and I continue to seek out their mentorship, especially now in office because the challenges only get bigger, the stakes only get higher, it feels like. Um, and so it's important to have those relationships now and also to be um, mentoring as we go. As Julia mentioned to Senator Coleman mentioned that I try to use my campaign as a place to bring in new people to gain experiences and whether they want um, to know about running campaigns or they wanna know about what it means to be in office, but to also continually be bringing in new people as we go is really important as well. We'll move on to the next question now, uh, and this will start with uh, Representative Olson. What is the best kept secret about your legislative district? Are there any pieces of legislation that you are currently working on? I guess it's right. a two part question. Yes. <laughs> best kept secret. Uh, I, well, I represent, I think, probably one of the districts that most everybody in Minnesota has been to. If you've been to the lift bridge, if you've been, if you've had a craft beer, you know, my district is pretty awesome. I mean, I'm sure every legislator thinks that, but best kept secret. I would say if it, I loved the Superior Hiking Trail sections in my district in West Duluth. I think if you come to the North Shore to go hiking or whatever, people always head to the other places and kind of miss out on the beauty that is the West Duluth sections of the Superior Hiking Trail are some of the best hiking trails in all of Minnesota. So that's that. Um, and then the second part of the question, yes, I'm working on, I try to carry legislation that's, you know, directly coming from my constituents, from my community, and prioritize that. So I have a number of uh, pieces of legislation from repairing the lift bridge uh, within our bonding uh, world to doing something that moves the needle on a constituent issue. Um, one is access to midwifery care. I've been doing a lot of meetings and talking about. 
Um, and then also doing some more bigger issues that impact the whole state. So I'm carrying the earn sick and safe time legislation this year that's currently moving through committee. So I have a lot of things, but I try to kind of think about um, that and have kind of those three buckets being my driving force. Senator Coleman, the same two questions for you. Well, I was excited to get this one because when people think about Carver County, Minnesota, I think they still think of a one road very um, farmland type of district and it's actually not. It is one of the fastest, actually it is the fastest growing county in the entire state. We have Paisley Park, uh, which is a big attraction um, and I am obsessed with all things Prince. So I love living five minutes from that. We have distilleries, we have breweries, we have the Arboretum. Uh, we have so much fun stuff to do in Carver County. And it's it's not surprising to me at all that it is just exploding with tons of young families moving in. Uh, so I love Carver County. And I think it's just kind of a hidden gem that more and more people are learning about. It's hopefully not going to remain a good secret for long. Uh, similar to Representative Olson, I it, the legislation is two parts, things that'll benefit all of my constituents. I'm also very uh, supportive of uh, midwives and making sure that moms have the best possible outcome. Uh, so I have a couple pieces of legislation on that. I have some legislation on um, getting more teachers of color in our classes, uh, education legislation, and then some district specific pieces. So there'll be some cities that, that need some help with some pretty serious infrastructure issues um, that are trying to get assistance in that regard. And then, as I mentioned before, we used to be just this small area that had one road and now it's expanding and booming. And so uh, some, tra some transportation needs as well that we're working on. And just a reminder again, that you can submit questions to our panelists. All you need to do is go to the Q and A function on your screen. We'll move on now to the next question. We'll start with Senator Coleman. What is something that people wouldn't know about being a legislator? I would say the biggest thing that surprised me was the second you announce you're running for office, the second you get your election certificate, people think they can say whatever they want to you. Um, I posted something I got from in my inbox the other day and people just were blown away. Wait, you hear this type of language shouted at you. It's like, yeah, I call this one Monday afternoon. Um, you know, people saying, you know, how dare you get pregnant and now you're not going to be working for us. And uh, it's almost like emotional abuse and you have to let it roll off your back, just hit delete and move on. But it, that's what blew me away was that people felt they could just say whatever to you. So you definitely develop a thick skin very quickly. Representative Olson, same question for you. Yeah, um, surprising. Yeah, that's, I mean, I would definitely agree. Just hearing you say that is very true, Senator Coleman. Um, a surprise, I think people don't quite understand what, you know, just the, the legislature and how it operates is common. I find myself spending a lot of time just kind of like, no, we, you know, don't do that or, you know, actually that's the federal government or actually, nope, I live in Duluth. And, you know, I sometimes will get constituents who are totally blown away by the fact that I'm like, no, I actually live four blocks from you. Like I, this is, you know, so I think just kind of some of the misconceptions and um, of what it means to serve in the state legislature and that we're part-time people, we don't have staff, um, you know, we have some assistance, that kind of thing. So, um, just kind of generally that kind of type of thing comes up quite a bit. Moving on now to our next question uh, comes from the audience and we'll start with Representative Olson. What do you do to break through the negative rhetoric while you campaign and govern? Yeah, that's a great question. And again, I think we all have a responsibility to, to change the tone and you know not wait for somebody else, but we have a role in that. Um, and so for me, and it's really about like, again, kind of going back to that authenticity, authenticity and, you know, really connected on connecting on our shared humanity. Um, you know, Senator Coleman and I are different parties probably have different viewpoints, but like, I'm sure you can hear from this, like, I feel connected to her in ways around what it means to be a mother 
like what she's saying resonates. And if we stay in that space of like the connectivity around our shared humanity and we campaign in that way, we talk in that way, we can then have room to totally disagree on all things policy, on all things, you know, whatever we need to do. But I think it's acknowledging that human experience and really leaning into that and, um, you know, forging those relationships and doing it in a way that really breaks down, I think, what is being told and expected of us to, to, to lean into that negative rhetoric. And I think, um, yeah, just doing things differently around that shared humanity. Senator Coleman, same question for you. Yeah, I think this is a really important question in today's day and age, and I got to experience it firsthand. I had a pretty brutal primary race getting here. Uh, I was personally attacked pretty much every day in that race, and I decided I'm not going to say my opponent's name. I'm not going to say one bad thing. I'm going to focus on me, why I'm running, and what I have to offer. And when those results came in 65% to 35% the night of the primary, I think people really resonate with that type of rhetoric of, you know, I'm not going to get negative on you. I'm going to, I'm going to focus on me and I'm doing the same here in the, in the legislature. I'm, I'm focusing on what I believe, what I see is, is, is the issue. And I never lump everyone into the same group. I never say Democrats are doing this or Republicans believe this. It is, here's what I believe. Here's what I see is the issue. And let's have a conversation about it. So it's definitely trying to personally tone down the rhetoric, rhetoric and then also keeping the focus on what you want the focus on. There's no need to point fingers and, and be negative. Moving on to our next question from the audience. We'll start with Senator Coleman. If you were going to write a memoir of your legislative experiences so far, what working title would you give it? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> five weeks of drinking from a fire hose, I think is what I would call it. Um, so it's, it's learning a lot really, really fast. Um, and hopefully I'll have a better title and a little more in-depth experience the next time I can do this for you. Representative Olson, same question for you. Oh, boy, that's a tough one. I feel like there's a lot of pressure there. <laughs> like, sum it down. <laughs> mm, I don't know. I hope it would be about... Um, yeah, do as much good as you can for as long as you can. Something about whatever our time is here, we can't determine fully, but do as much good as we can while we're here. Moving on to our next question. How did your time as a U of M student prepare you for this career path? We'll start with Representative Olson. Yeah, I touched on that a little bit at kind of the opening that I do think, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on a panel <laughs> with university folks, but I really do think it was the UMD experience that laid that that foundation, um, both around, you know, understanding like a practical application of sociology really is what I'm doing. It's people, it's connections, it's understanding our history. Um, I also got involved, you know, with College Democrats for the first time there. And, and the first time I ever picked up a phone to make a phone call um, for a campaign was through the connections I made at the university. Um, I mentioned the student walkout and finding a bunch of people, including my husband, who had shared values. Uh, I still kept in touch with a number of my professors. I mean, I could go on and on. It, it really is everything from both the educational classroom experience to the connections I made. It, it's the reason I didn't ever want to leave Duluth um, and why I chose to make it my home after I graduated. So in, in every way possible, I think my university education, my UMD education really helped prepare me for where I am today. Senator Coleman, same question. Yeah, I hit earlier on the importance of uh, not just relying on your degree and having that wide breadth of experience, uh, interning and you know, getting to know the key players in the area and how the university helped me to do that was that they allowed me to get credit for those internships. It would have been really hard to balance my course load with interning if that had not been an option. And that showed me that they believe and understand this real world experience is just as valuable, is just as educational and just as important. So by allowing me to spend time inside the, at the actual legislature interning, uh, prepared me the best for this. And so that opportunity, I think, led to a, a lot of open doors. 
Well, we do need to wrap up. And uh, with that, we'll start with Senator Coleman. Any final thoughts that you have that you would like to share with alumni and students? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for inviting me. I was really excited to get the invita invitation and, and to speak to everybody and you all asked great questions. Uh, if you are interested in getting into policy and politics, uh, I don't care what walk of life you're in or what your beliefs are, I'm happy to help guide you and point you in the right direction. Um, and sometimes the questions I've gotten are very rudimentary and sometimes they're very complex and I'm always uh, available to try to help navigate all of those. Um, and you know, feel free to reach out anytime. I'd like to say I'd see you all in person at some sort of lobby day. I don't know when that's gonna happen, but I try to be as accessible as possible um, in the virtual realm that we're all in right now. So thank you all very much. Representative Olson. Yeah, just thank you. Thank you, Jim, for doing a great job moderating uh, the panel. And um, thank you, everyone, for attending and being here and taking an hour with us. It was great. It's hard not to see people's faces. That's always the hard part. So yeah, reach out um, and feel free to connect in any way possible. And hopefully we can figure out how to still make sure that you have a, a great lobby day, virtual or not, and just make sure your needs are known at the Capitol, what the university needs are known, the alumni needs are known. Um, but feel free to reach out anytime and just, I think you're a strong voice and you're a voice that's heard. And so make sure you just continue to put that into the conversation wherever possible. And um, yeah, just continue to do that. And thank you for doing and being here today. And speaking of lobby day, March 4th is support the U day. It will be a virtual event this year. Well, thank you so much to our two alumni legislators for joining us today. And we should mention that you are among 47 U of M alumni legislators, but thank you so much. It's been a wonderful, wonderful career panel. And uh, it's nice to have a bipartisan career panel too. And uh, we certainly hope this conversation has laid the foundation for some collaboration between you two moving forward. Once again, thanks to everyone for joining this Career Month event, and we look forward to seeing you at another Alumni Association event very soon.